So I had intended to film a whole vlog video while I was reading this book. This is my booktube spin pick, um, Ragged Company by Richard Wagamies. Unfortunately, right around the time that I started reading it, I, I got pretty sick, uh, just with a bad flu. Um, but I, I kept reading it and now I'm over halfway through the book. <laughs> So, and I haven't talked about it at all yet, so I, I figure I'll just kind of get you up to speed today and then we'll just go from here and see how much more I want to talk about it. And this might be in part due to the fact that I was kind of sick while I, when I started reading it, but yeah, it's been going pretty slowly and um, I've been getting pretty emotional <laughs> while I'm reading it. Uh, so it's about the four chronically homeless people and the first like one third or so of the book we are just getting to know each of them a little bit individually and kind of getting to know how they came together and came to be a kind of a group that that hangs out together a lot they start going to the movies a lot which is very emotional <laughs> and Wagamese has um, some really beautiful moments um, with the pros so anyway, yeah, it's been kind of hitting me. And then right toward the end of that first part, they find a, a lottery ticket and they know that they've won millions of dollars or that the ticket is worth millions of dollars, but they haven't actually cashed it in yet because you can't just like cash that in at the gas station. <laughs> you have to go like somewhere special and get like one of those giant checks and talk to the media and it's a whole thing. So I stopped at that point, like right before they actually cashed in the check, I stopped reading it for like two days. <laughs> and I think it's because I knew that it was going to be like really hard and emotional and that I was going to have to watch these people that I was getting to know and, and see how their lives were going to change forever in ways that maybe they didn't want them to. Oh, and also there's Granite, who I haven't mentioned, uh, who's a, a retired reporter and he randomly met uh, the group of four in the movie theater one day and they kind of ended up um, bringing him into their group I guess he's kind of part of their group now and that's pretty cool so he's been helping them with this process a lot they call him a square John because he's a, a regular Joe who lives in the, the normal world I'm liking it so far it's slow going as I've said there's some some really nice pros, but also some like really tough moments. All, obviously, all four of the main characters didn't become homeless because they had really easy, <laughs> great lives. So as we're learning more about them, it's, it's just hard. It hurts me a little bit. And I just, I want them all to come out okay in the end. I want all their lives to go well. I also like that clearly all four of the characters are very different from each other and they all became homeless for different reasons and they handle it very differently from one another. Yeah, I think I'm going to end it there for now. I think that's that's all I have to say that's really meaningful as of, as of right now. And I am sure I will see you guys momentarily. Yeah, I'm not finishing this book. I'm sorry, I really wanted to. It's It's not that it's a bad book. It's just that it's very sad. It's got beautiful prose, some wonderful characters. I think it's very well written. I really like how Wagamese gets us to empathize so much with his characters because his characters are people who live on the outskirts of society. And they are, I think, very realistic representations of people who are homeless and people that you might encounter rarely in your life in, in such a, a close way. We have the opportunity to see homeless people a lot of the time, especially if you live in a bigger city, but we rarely have the opportunity to get to know a person who's homeless. So I think for a lot of people, this will be pretty eye-opening and really help them access some empathy for people living in these types of situations. For me, working at the public library, we do encounter a lot of people who are, if not homeless, then 
uh, who have housing insecurity and job insecurity and who are living in poverty, who are kind of, yeah, pushed to the margins of society and who are largely unseen by most other people. So for me, it was more just really, really sad. (laughs) So these four people are living on the streets and at one point they decide to try to get out of the cold. There's a massive cold front coming in and it, it, previous cold fronts, I think this one actually as well, killed some of their um, acquaintances who are also homeless. So in order to get out of the cold, they decide to go to a movie theater and they stay there for, they watch a couple of movies in a row. They stay there for the evening and uh, they kind of get hooked on watching movies. So they start going to the theater on a regular basis and they save up money and uh, set time aside and they start kind of, these four people will meet every day or two and go to a movie. And that part's really beautiful. Um, Just the kind of quiet appreciation for stories and the visual storytelling medium. And it's very kind of artsy and philosophical and the the deep thinking that goes on is is really my jam. (laughs) And then everything changes when one of them finds a lottery ticket on the ground and it turns out to be a winner and they win $13 million. (laughs) And this happens maybe a third of the way into the book. So winning this $13 million has the potential to change all of their lives drastically forever. And it does, but it also doesn't. So they're able to buy a house. They all buy one house together and decide to stay together because they're, none of them is used to living in a home like that. And all of them kind of have an aversion to walls, which is something that happened to each of them individually before they became homeless, but was also kind of part of the reason they became homeless. It's, it's complicated. You'd have to read the book. Anyway, they buy, they buy this house, but a lot of the kind of psychological trauma that they carry with them, things that cause them to become homeless or remain homeless, that trauma is still with them. So the rest of the book is them trying to deal with these traumas and telling each other their stories, which they have never wanted to talk about before or felt comfortable talking about before. And all of their stories are really sad, (laughs) as you can imagine. And for me, it's just too much right now. I found myself sitting on my patio. I I did have a little bit of a fever at the time to me. <laughs> I'll admit I was, I was sick for a while. I got pretty sick, but I'm better now. It's all good. I was sitting on the patio, a little bit fevered, reading this book and just constantly tearing up while I was reading it. I'm like, oh, I just want them all to have good lives. I want them all to be able to move forward and, and live freely and happily. And I just want them all to be safe. And <laughs> it was just very like, not big emotions, but deep emotions, if that makes sense. Just like quietly crying while I'm reading this book. (laughs) And it was taking me a long time to get through as well. In part because I wasn't feeling well and I was only awake for like six hours a day, but also because it was just, it's pretty dense. The prose is pretty dense and it's just so heavy. I don't, I didn't always feel like picking it up. And one day I set it down and it's been 10, 12 days and I haven't picked it up again. So I've realized that I am just not going to finish it, which kind of sucks. But um, I tried to find a Wikipedia plot. (laughs) I find Wikipedia usually has the most detailed plots. They have all the spoilers in there. Or sometimes you can find like a, a book club discussion site that will describe the plot in detail or like uh if it's a book kids will read in school then you can find really detailed plot summaries i I thought i could be okay with that and just finding out what happened without having to read through all of the tragedy but i couldn't although i did find right on goodreads 
if you don't want spoilers for this book, don't go on Goodreads and look at the questions because there's a spoiler in one of the questions on Goodreads. Like, in the question, not the answer. <laughs> so I know one more tragic thing that happens in this book, and it made me kind of mad. <laughs> so, and it, and it made me realize that I'm really not in the right place to read the rest of this book right now. Life is heavy enough for me right now, so I, I just can't add on to it by continuing to read this book. However, I do recommend it. <laughs> it's very well written. Um, Wagamies has a great deal of empathy for these four homeless characters. The characters are all very unique from one another. They all end up being homeless for very specific and different reasons that all feel more or less authentic and uh, realistic to me, mostly. One of them's a little bit uh, like, hmm, but that's okay. <laughs> if you're looking for some empathy, if you're looking for uh, a good cry, which is totally fair, definitely read this book. <laughs> uh, I hope it has a positive ending. I suspect it does. There is a thread of hope throughout, but be warned that the vast majority of the book is very heavy and depressing. I think I just have to end the video there because that's all I've got to say about this book. So um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have a great day and uh, bye.